A battle over a proposed rental car fee could derail the billion-dollar Chula Vista Bayfront project the stance city leaders in the South Bay are now taking. And after another day of record city heat, I'm tracking the return of humidity. Plus, California wants to expand the Hillcrest DMV, but not everyone's on board. It feels like the state of California is giving the people of San Diego the middle finger. Why there's a pushback against a plan that could actually reduce wait times. But first, and only on 10 News. My heart sank right into the pit of my stomach. An Ocean Beach man says he was home when two burglars in that white Mercedes were raiding his garage. And the big body blow came when the man went out to the street. But as 10 News reporter Michael Chen found out, his loss prompted neighbors to come together for their own investigation. A slightly open garage door, a bit of body maneuvering, and that's all it took for the burglars to get in. Along Lotus Street last week, very quiet around 1 30 one afternoon. Nothing happens here ever. Something did happen. Evan Montoya was in his upstairs bedroom and never heard a thing. Violated, to be honest. But when he went down to the garage, it makes me sick to think about it. He noticed some things were out of place. His car keys gone. Outside the car belonging to Montoya, an Uber driver, nowhere to be found. My heart sank right into the pit of my stomach. They took my entire world when they took my car. But that was hardly the entire loss. Montoya believes the intruders slipped under the garage door, left open because the garage gets hot. And this is where we usually keep our leaf blower. Before grabbing everything electric. Basically went on a shopping spree through our entire garage and took anything they wanted. After the break-in, a neighbor handed him this video. A white Mercedes stopped in the alley in front of the garage. Two people going back and forth to the garage before they take off. You don't feel safe in your own home, and that's like the one place you're really supposed to feel safe. Montoya's car found abandoned a few days later. Meanwhile, this video shared by neighbors across social media. Some seven other neighbors reporting similar break-ins. Like some people going through alleys, stealing from garages, houses. Montoya believes the incident's now bringing the neighbors closer, more willing to look out for each other. Shows that there's still good in the world, and people are always willing to help you in your time of need. Michael Chen. 10 News. Right now, it's unclear if any of the other break-ins are linked, but if you have information on these cases, please call Crime Stoppers. Well, tonight, local police officers are meeting with the people they protect as part of National Night Out. The South Bay Rec Center has held an event for the past 10 years. It begins with a crime awareness walk, led this year by San Diego Police Chief David Nislight. The event's organizers say it's a great way for people young and old to meet officers patrolling our streets. And we have a full list of all the national night out events on our website, 10news.com. Tonight, our military community is mourning the death of a sailor killed in a training accident at Naval Air Station, North Island. A fuel tank detached from a helicopter on July 30th and hit Naval Helicopter Air Crewman First Class Jonathan Clement. He was rushed to UC San Diego Medical Center in Hillcrest and died the next day. Clement's family was flown in from Florida to be by his side, and his father described his son to 10 News. He may have been small in stature and size, but the kid had the biggest heart, and uh, and he 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 was just an amazing young man. And a fellow petty officer was also hit by the fuel tank and suffered minor injuries. The accident is now under investigation. All right, now to a follow up on the man arrested in this video that brought scrutiny to the sheriff's department. Gerardo Martinez Jr. will not spend any more time behind bars. He was given credit for time served and placed on probation today as part of his domestic violence plea deal. The cell phone video of Martinez Jr. and his father getting arrested went viral earlier this year. It shows deputies slamming Martinez Sr. into a fence in Vista earlier. Uh, Martinez Sr. got involved when deputies were arresting his son. All of the charges against Martinez Sr. were dropped. And the San Diego woman shot in the eye during the attack on the Route 91 Festival in Las Vegas is back home tonight. Tina Frost returned to San Diego Sunday night. A family friend posted the update on Tina's GoFundMe page. She still requires several surgeries and will fly back to Maryland for that. Her next one is scheduled for this fall. And crews have stopped the progress of a brush fire burning in the North County. The Kathy fire started, started off Daly Road and Linda Lane in Fallbrook at about 1 o'clock this afternoon, growing to four acres. Two homes were evacuated before crews got the flames under control. No one was injured and the cause is under investigation.
The crews battling those flames are dealing with another day of record setting heat. Our meteorologist Angelica Campos has a closer look at those conditions they're dealing with tonight. Yeah, it's been in the triple digits for the Holy Fire and pretty much all of Southern California under an excessive heat warning, but it's set to expire tonight. Some of the records and here's the list. It's a long one. So here we go. San Diego breaking the record of 87 from 1983 with 91 degrees today. Also triple digits in Escondido 102 in Ramona. We tied the record of 101 from 1983. Campo tying the record of 105 two days in a row In Poway. We also set records today with 102 degrees degrees. The previous record was 95 set in 2012. Also setting records in Carlsbad and at the Oceanside Airport. Conditions will get just a little bit better, but then it turns humid. I'll pinpoint our chance for thunderstorms. Angelica, thank you. Tonight, Chula Vista City leaders are discussing how to handle a lawsuit that could threaten its $1 billion Bayfront project. And 10 News anchor Aria Wessler is live at Chula Vista City Hall, and the mayor is addressing this issue at the city meeting tonight, Ariel. Steve Kimberly, that's right. That meeting got underway just about an hour ago. This item, one of the last on the agenda in tonight's open session, and the stakes couldn't be higher for the future of Chula Vista. The Chula Vista Bayfront project, decades in the making, closer than ever to becoming a reality. It's a billion dollars worth of, uh, of economic activity in the region. This is going to be benefit Coronado, IB, Chula Vista, National City, City of San Diego, in the entire South Bay region. So the stakes are really, really good. But a tug of war between the airport authority and its landlord, the Port of San Diego, could derail the entire project with plans for a hotel, convention center, and promenade. We have the possibility of losing over 7,000 jobs. These are good paying jobs. It's all over a $3.50 car rental fee at the airport. The money generated from that fee would pay for the $40 million parking structure on the Chula Vista Bayfront. But Hertz and Enterprise now challenging that fee in court. I was outraged because we are one of the port cities and it's uh, we should all benefit equally. Chula Vista argues the port used that same fee to pay for the parking facility at the San Diego Convention Center years ago. It's uh, outrageously unfair that that financing mechanism, which has been used in the past, um, is now being challenged. But the airport is also joining the lawsuit, saying it has the power to determine who pays fees at its facilities. The, the mere threat of that being um, pulled from the project, uh, it's going to make it very difficult for us. All right now, Chula Vista is not part of this lawsuit, but it plans to discuss strategy with its legal team at tonight's uh, closed session meeting. Meantime, Airport Authority Chair April Bowling tells me that she's ready to address the matter, and Port Commissioners are scheduled to hold a closed session meeting on Thursday to talk about their next move. Live in Chula Vista, Ariel Wessler, 10 News. Important meeting there. Thank you, Ariel. The future of President Trump's proposed border wall hinges on the decision of an appeals court in Pasadena. The environmental group Center for Biological Diversity argued today the Trump administration shouldn't be allowed to waive environmental reviews. It's the same argument that a federal judge in San Diego rejected earlier this year. If the appeals court upholds that decision, it clears the way for several miles of the wall to be constructed east of San Diego. The SDSU West and Soccer City plans for the Mission Valley Stadium site will both appear on the November ballot. A state appeals court has rejected city attorney Mara Elliott's petition to have them removed. Elliott tried arguing that the city shouldn't be forced to lease or sell the property. But the court ruled that voters will be allowed to determine the site's future because of overwhelming public interest. Whichever proposal gets majority support will be allowed to negotiate with the city over the land. The cost of living is one of the biggest hardships for people trying to make it in San Diego. And now the county is trying to ease some of that burden. Developers in San Diego will get $25 million to build seven low income housing projects from Vista to the border. This map shows where six of them will go. The money will be a loan that doesn't have to get paid back for 99 years. Supervisor Ron Roberts says it will be a game changer. For a family of four earning uh, just over $70,000, they wouldn't pay any more than $1,900 a month. You can't find enough bedrooms for a family of four at $1,900 in San Diego. 
The money is expected to create more than 500 affordable housing units. And do you think the county's plan will help more San Diegans make it? Just email us at tips at 10news.com or message us on our ABC 10 News Facebook page.